hi everyone and welcome back to my channel and if you know hi and on this channel we do makeup and tell you can at the same time so if you think that's something that you'd like like subscribe um so today we're going to be talking about the catherine knight case if you've heard of it then you know i'm just gonna give a bit of a disclaimer now this video does get a bit like dark so if you think that it'll be a bit too much just don't watch just wait till next wednesday and it'll probably still be the same <laughs> probably just be as dark but yeah we'll get into it if you have any like questions about what i'm using like makeup wise i'll leave it down below um, in the description and I'll have it all written down like I do every video um, just because I don't want to be telling you what I'm using while I'm telling you about the case because it'll just interfere with each other so don't know what makeup we're going to be doing don't even want to wear foundation today so we'll figure it out as we go along so I'll start off with a little bit of like a backstory like I do with everyone that we talk about. So Catherine was born in Aberdeen, New South Wales, which is just north of Sydney, Australia. In 1871, Catherine worked in a slaughterhouse, which was, she was just taking like the meat and everything off the bones and used to take like the bone marrow and everything off the dead carcass. Then said that she was very good at a job and she was very good with a knife and said that she really enjoyed a job. Okay, you're gonna have to keep up with the names because this woman she had so many different fellas who have all got the same name. So just keep that in mind. I'll go through it as like thoroughly as I can. If you're like John twice, don't worry about it. So, Kath, she obviously, like I've just mentioned, had a lot of different boyfriends and husbands. and So, Kath just struggled a lot with relationships. So, David and Kath got together while she was still working at the butcher shop. David was supposedly a very bad alcoholic went and had a drink and we'll come home and try and beat Catherine but Catherine had none of it she didn't let it happen she fought him off so he quickly learned like no can't mess with her in 1974 Kath convinced David to get married um, but obviously he was an alcoholic so he was just constant trouble in the relationship it was just constant arguments and fights and on the wedding night, um, you know, after the wedding we love, you know, I don't know, um, David fell asleep after like one round and this really upset Kath because previously everyone had been telling her, oh, we've done it two to three times on our wedding night. Because it annoyed Kath that much, she tried to strangle him in his sleep, but he woke up and fought her off and everything. But they still stayed together 10 years strong and had two daughters. In the midst of all the drama and everything that had been going on with Kath and David, he only like tried to leave her once before. Tried to leave in the middle of the night, which sent Kath into a really like deep depression. Um, she ended up finding the car mechanic that David went to um, and s tried to bite him and said that she was going to kill him because he fixed David's car, which was what like, helped him leave her. She did end up going to a psychiatric hospital not long after her and David got back together the drama continued but in the end they did end up separating so now we're on to the second relationship 
so this man was also called David so now this this relationship is where you see like really see how much of a weirdo she was um so David they got together and David kept his other apartment because he just liked his own space and just a place of his own but Kath didn't like this because she felt like he was living a double life and basically he could have been cheating on her and, and so in an, they constantly used to argue about this apartment but in the end in the middle of an argument she picked up the two month old puppy that they got together and slit its throat basically just to prove to David like this is what I'm capable of but you know like the other David stayed together why like if, if that is not a red flag I honestly don't know what is if people can't see like no maybe maybe this one I can just like I can just find another girlfriend who doesn't slip my dog's throat but you know they ended up having a daughter together oh and her reasoning for slitting the dog's throat was because she was just cr cranky if i slit a dog's throat every time i was cranky they continued to be together as a daughter and then they got into another heated argument and she ended up stabbing him with a pair of scissors so david now got the right idea and that relationship ended now on to the third relationship this was with a man called john this relationship was one of the most um like subdued is that the right word just very calm not much really going on in it only well because calf was just out cheating with everyone so she never really had the time to be slitting dogs throats or anything she was cheating on john with john the real john the main john the main john con from old swan this relationship is what tipped Calf over the edge basically the relationship was going very well um john had two kids of his own they were like a bit older but they said that they always got on with Kath. they never had any issues with her or anything she was probably loved her really so john was 45 and worked in the local mines so Kath was trying to convince John for them to get married but he just wasn't very like fond of the idea of marriage which mm, of course Kath did not like um, so friends started to notice that she started to get like a bit abusive physically and verbally so as you can already tell Kath was a fucking bitch basically and when she was angry or had any type of issue she'd done things out of vengeance she was just a very nasty nasty woman um so here's an example when calf now when john came home from work he had a first aid kit that he got from work and calf took a picture of it and sent it to his boss which got him fired because it was like stealing from the workplace basically so she got john fr fired from this nice like a job that paid a lot of money just because she got annoyed at something john ended up kicking calf out of the house for this for about three months but obviously calf got away back in and everything was fine and dandy again so calf was always trying to get john to well for them to get married i don't know what a big thing is about marriage she just like wanted to be married to everyone but john didn't want to and always made sure that he told 
either a friend, a work colleague, anyone, any time that like they had an argument, just so nothing could ever be turned around on him, like that she could say he was abusing her or anything because he basically had a witness and he also used to tell people that if anything was to ever happen to him that it was Kathy who'd done it like if he went missing it would have been because of Kath so John did end up ringing the police to for them to remove Kath from his house but all that they told him was that didn't she, he needed a court order for them to remove her. So in February 2000, um, there was a fight that happened between Kath and John, which ended up with Kath stabbing John in the chest. Um, the police were obviously called, but Kath basically said that it was self-defence because he was abusing her. And then she ended up getting a restraining order against them. So at this point, John did end up sitting like his boss down to make sure that everyone knew if something was to happen, it was because of Kath. Because she's a psychopath. <laughs> I think. Um, John ended up going to court to try and get Kath permanently removed from his house. But all that he got was a restraining order. But, like, do you really think Kath is going to give a fuck about a restraining order? Like, she's slitting ba <laughs> <Not> babies. <gasps> she's slitting puppies throughout left, right and centre and fucking stabbing people. So, John got home from work at about 11 a.m. And he just got himself a shower, unwinded, relaxed, and then ended up going to bed. And then Kath came a bit later on, just have something to eat, got a shower, watched the telly for a bit um, and then went to bed. So they ended up taking in sexual acts and John just went back asleep and Kath obviously didn't. Kath kept a butcher's knife in like the what's called a bedside cabinet she kept the butcher knife in one of the drawers so she got the butcher knife out and proceeded to stab john 37 times and according to like the blood splatter analysis whatever it's called um john did try and fight her back but obviously he'd been stabbed so many times so unfortunately he did end up passing away and Kath went and took loads of tablets to try and kill herself or make it look like she tried to kill herself next day when John didn't show up for work his co-workers obviously knew like he'd already told them before if anything was to happen, if I don't show up for work, ring the police because like he wouldn't not go to work. So his co-workers rang the police and they went and done a welfare check to see like if he was okay. Um, so when they got to the house, they obviously knew that John was in it because his truck was outside of the house. Um, but when they knocked, there was no answer. So they kept on knocking, obviously no answer, and they look, ended up looking through the letterbox to see if they could see anything. When the police looked through the letterbox, they seen like a curtain, so they couldn't like really see much. So they did end up entering the property, and when they went in, they just saw blood everywhere. Um, all over the kitchen and everything through the house um, one of the police officers ended up pushing the curtain um, and when he did he noticed that he had blood all over his arm so when they looked at the curtain it was skin just a big sheet of skin 
which obviously calf had like took off John's body um, and on the floor underneath it was a torso without a head on. As the police kept walking around the house to obviously see like what else was there, um, they ended up seeing that four plates had been arranged on the table and they found John's head on like the top of the oven. The police carried on like investigating the house and they ended up hearing snoring upstairs. So they went up and Kath was asleep on the bed. And when they tried to wake her up, she wouldn't wake up. Like they literally tried for ages and she just wouldn't wake up because of all the tablets that she took. So they ended up lifting her up out the bed and taking her downstairs into the garden. So police carry on after they've took her out um, just looking around the house and they ended up noting like little things such as like the skin was hanging on like the door frame by butchers like hooks. Obviously when the blood spotter people came they determined that Kath had stabbed him in the bed. John had tried to fight Kath off and ended up getting to like the light switch because there was blood on the light switch. And they also seen that John had ran through the hallway and you could see that like the blood was slowly getting lower and lower on the wall from him obviously like falling because how weak he would have been. Um, but he did end up making it down the stairs and to the door because there was blood left on the front door um, but then you could see that there was drag like dragon marks from where Kath had dragged him away from the door and in like the living room type of area like the lounge that's where most of the blood was so that's where Kath would have skinned him and decapitated him. Um, it was shown, well, the blood splatter people know that she would have skinned him, placed the skin next to her whilst she decapitated him and then took his head over to the kitchen because there was like drip marks all the way to the kitchen. He's up cutting a piece of his back muscle off and cutting it into five pieces so like i said before there was four plates laid out in the kitchen and kath had cut it into five pieces put four of them on the plates to invite the kids around for the kids to eat and she didn't forget about the dog because she cut him a piece of so she was literally cutting the dad up and was going to invite the kids around for them to eat the dad but i was thinking obviously she fell asleep didn't she so was she like expecting like the kids to come around and then obviously there would have been blood everywhere so like she fell asleep so was she gonna like come down and like clean everywhere and then just act as if normal or was just gonna leave the blood everywhere because then obviously the kids would have knew, wouldn't they? The police did end up like um, putting together like a timeline of what, like when everything exactly took place. Um, so Kath had killed John, skins him and everything and started cooking him. And then she went up, got a shower, got herself all clean and everything and then took John's bank card out of his wallet and went and ran some errands. Took a thousand dollars out of his bank account, um, which they never ended up finding. They think that she buried it and then was going to go back later on and get the money. Um, so. Kath ended up being in a coma for about four to five days in hospital, so obviously they couldn't ask her any questions.
um, but when she ended up coming around, they started questioning it and she didn't remember anything that happened. Well, she didn't remember what happened. Kath, well, at first, never admitted that she killed him or what she'd done. But she did end up coming to terms with the fact that she did kill him. So Kath ended up claiming that she killed him because of the years of, of abuse that she'd suffered from John. Never exactly give like the story of what happened. She never told anyone, like, this is how I've done it. Do you know what I mean? Like, she never said any of that. She just, like, come to terms with the fact that she did kill him and why she'd done it, but not the exact story of what happened. But a brother ended up telling people that Kath had rang him and said she was going to kill John and she was going to get away with it because she was going to start acting crazy. So during the trial, Kath pled not guilty at first, but then in the middle of the trial, ended up pleading guilty. Didn't give any reason why. So the judge was like a bit nervous about this because he knew exactly what she was going to do. She was going to plead guilty for the fact of like reasons of insanity during the time of admitting to the murder. Psych psychiatrist said that she was in her right mind during the murder. She knew exactly what was going on and that she was mentally stable. Well, how can anyone be mentally stable but then do something like that? They must have been something. I'm not giving it like, like a reason why she done it, but they must be something like mentally wrong with her to be able to like skin someone. Do you know what I mean? Like, you don't just do that as like a well person, do you? Throughout the course, she didn't show any signs of remorse, and she just, she was a bit of a weird one. She just started acting crazy, like she just sat there and started screaming out of nowhere and would rock back and forth, obviously, to show, well, to try and prove that she was crazy, but she went. So. The judge ended up giving her a life sentence without the possibility of parole. In 2006, Kath applied to appeal the sentence um, because she thought it was too extreme for the crime that she'd done. So obviously, she's not mentally well, is she? She can't be. She thinks it's too extreme. And she ended up being the first woman in Australia to have a life sentence without the possibility of parole so you go Kath you set on records so now Kath is in prison and goes to church and is in the women's choir so God that's what she's came to so yeah that's the story of Catherine Knight and I hope you've enjoyed this is what we're going to do at the end of every video we're going to have puppy cuddles so everyone I hope you've enjoyed the video like, subscribe and I'll be back next Wednesday with another video so see you later